The World Health Organization estimates that each year approximately 1 million people take their own life. That's one death every 40 seconds. Experts predicted numbers would peak in 2020, but no one could have imagined the devastation brought on by COVID-19. During the coronavirus pandemic, you may experience anxiety, sadness, and loneliness. Existing mental health conditions, including severe anxiety and major depression, may worsen. If you're feeling hopeless, contemplating self-harm, or you're concerned about someone else, I'm here to tell you there is hope. A Mission for Michael is dedicated to helping clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation. Mission for Michael is the premier resource for intensive mental health treatment in Southern California. With an astonishing two-to-one client-to-staff ratio, each client in their facility receives individual care 24 hours a day, overseen by a team of all doctorate or master's level clinicians. With a focus on evidence-based treatment, along with personalized and compassionate care, they offer mental health treatment that can change lives. If you're suffering from mental illness or you're concerned about a loved one, go to amfmtreatment.com. Again, that's a mission for Michael, AMFM, amfmtreatment.com, or call 866-581-4401. Again, that is 866-581-4401. According to SAMHSA's National Survey on Drug Use and Health, approximately 20.3 million people above the age 12 suffer from substance use disorder. Incredible. The disease of addiction takes an average of 130 Americans every day. Sadly, the opioid crisis, which many consider the worst pandemic of our time, has been even further perpetuated by the spread of COVID-19. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, drug overdoses have increased by 18%. Factors like economic stress and social isolation have led to increased depression and unnecessary deaths. A Better Life Recovery is a premier addiction treatment center in Southern California, offering one of the most highly regarded and comprehensive addiction treatment programs in the United States. Dedicated to helping its clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation, they offer a 45 to 90 day program custom tailored to meet the needs of each individual client. Long term is the way to go. Many of A Better Life's clients elect to stay up to nine months to receive additional support. A Better Life Recovery will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to ensure the success of every client. Are you ready for a better life? Go to abetterliferecovery.com or call 866-581-4401 now. Hey, everyone. Whoa. Dose of Dr. Drew. That came through on my mic. How you know about what? that? Remember last time they told me to turn everything up? Ah. Oh, that's a hot one. Phew. Test one, two, one, two. Hi, guys. So, watching the restream here. How's, how's that sound? Let me. How's the sound on the other end of the world? Let's uh, hear what they have to say. Down a little bit. Yes, uh, John Leiterman, we are live. Good to hear from you. Uh, Andrew, bad news today. The COVID 19 projection will not extend past November 1st. I wonder why that is. I guess they can't build accurate models. Uh, last update to the model will be next Monday. Huh. That's interesting. Are they? Did they lose their funding or something? Uh, Andrew Oshkosh and I are talking about COVID-19 dash yeah, projections, which is our favorite website to look at projections about, you know, where, where, who's right and who's likely to be accurate modeling about the, uh, the virus. Sunny Chopra says it sounds good. All right, good. All right, great. Hi, Sunny. All right. Everyone. At least on Periscope. Oh, all yeah, right. That opening was just like a blast. I know. Sorry about that. The ghost in the room. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, wait, wait, I lost who that was. Richard, appreciate it. Uh, we try to we try to please. We're gonna have the great Tyrus in here in just a second. Uh, before I go into that, some interesting stuff going on out in the world. Uh, let me just give you the U.S. data if I can here very quickly. Uh, this is I can still Andrew. I can still get a COVID tracking project, which is still quite quite good. Uh, looking at give me a second, I'm looking at Florida, which is kind of interesting in of itself. Let me do look at that. Yeah, Florida continues down. Florida continues down, everyone. Florida opened up without consulting CNN. I don't know. What what did they think they were doing? They are now 100% (laughs) open, and they didn't consult with CNN. I I don't know what their thought process was. That's shocking. Now, nationally, we've got a little tick up. Um, Can you show the L.A. thing? I will. The L.A. Yeah, I will. Just a second. Um, Although yesterday we were at 35,000 cases, sometimes the weekend takes a downturn just by virtue of how cases are reported. Death rate is still down. That is a, a real number. 
hospitalization rates are sort of plateaued. So nationally, we're kind of, if you, you know, we, we, as I've said repeatedly, we have to really take into consideration what we mean when we see cases, when we say cases. We're not talking necessarily about sick people. We're just talking about presence of viral RNA or particles, pieces of viral RNA, not even necessarily live virus. So seeing cases go up does not have a lot of significance if we're not seeing death rate up and hospitalization rate up. Now, I'm not saying you should, we should ignore it. I'm just saying it is not that significant, as significant as if we were having sick people go up. So Indiana and Florida have opened up. So let me look at the data in Indiana. Indiana is looking quite good. They're plateaued at around between 800 and 1,000 cases a day. Death rate is plateaued at around 18, 10 cases a day. The hospitalization rate, though, has gone up a little bit in the last three or four days. So it will be interesting to see if that trend continues and if the opening has had that effect. They should, if it, you know, just like Florida, they've opened all over the place. They're going to have to be careful with little outbreaks, and they're going to have to protect the vulnerable. They're going to have to do that. It's not just open and then come what may. They're going to have to open sort of a responsible way. Uh, in Florida, however, hospitalization rate is down, case rate is down, death rate is plateaued. So uh, Florida, we'll see in a week or so where Florida is, but it's kind of interesting, isn't it? They've opened everything out, everything up, rather. Here's a question. Yeah. Why do we continue to test negative? We can be negative on a testing day, then catch COVID before receiving results. <laughs> uh, that is one of the questions about why we do the testing we do, right? And why... You know, you can you can be you can get a rapid antigen result, which is a pretty accurate test, and know within a half an hour what your results are. You're not going to catch it in that intervening half hour. Is New York State up? Let me give you a little update on New York State. Kind of a good question, though. Yeah. I mean, when we go to do Teen Mom, we got to get tested every day. And we're going to be quarantined the whole time. That I don't understand that logic. Uh, New York is uh, is this New York? Explain to everybody what you have to do. So we're going to do a Teen Mom reunion. I've got to go to New York and just sit in my apartment for a week, during which time I'm being tested every other day. Okay, Seems to catch me, it on the plane. if we're going to be tested every other day, we might as well not be in quarantine, but okay. Uh, in New York, the <laughs> well, hospital... you don't want to catch it while you're there. You want to... I understand, but we would pick it up on the COVID it's test. Worth, it's worth so paying. New York State, it is insane to me that they're talking about New York State being up. New York State has gone from 700 daily cases to essentially... 800 daily, 900 daily cases, let's say, 850. Hospitalization rate has gone from 470 to 4,500. The death rate has continued down. And again, laggy indicator, maybe wait for that plateaus or turns around. But you're almost, it's almost a non-change. Now, people should keep an eye on it, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a plateau. It is not a upturn as, as the press is reporting it. Again, they cannot resist the panic. They cannot resist it. Um, yeah, I tweeted somebody, you're talking about why aren't we as good as Canada? They have a third, the positive test. I tweeted something from a Canadian physician yesterday or day before where she was saying that, you know, our fear of illness and death has become problematic. And uh, maybe I should read the actual, uh, Fauci says Florida bar opening is very concerning. Yes. Uh, Jonathan, no, uh, Gordon, that is what my man, I I've told you forever. You should listen to Fauci. He's very conservative. He overstates. He will get us through this safely. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. I remember back in the AIDS epidemic, he told us there are going to be 2 million dead. We had 175,000 dead. So it was, it was good. He got us through it without, without 2 million deaths. I mean, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, okay, hold on a second here. Uh, I'm looking for a tweet I put out that I'd like to read to you all. See if it actually comes up. Uh, 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 uh. Mm, maybe. Well, we have great news. Yeah. Tyrus here. Oh, well, Megan Kelly. Kelly on Wednesday at two. Wednesday at two. Megan Kelly will be here. Yeah. So anybody want to ask? We're gonna we're gonna interview her and then take your questions afterwards. So sign up at drdrew.tv and you'll get notified when we launch, or go to the YouTube channel and get your reservation there. This is from Dr. Cower in uh, Canada. She says, life itself has inherent risk. You can never hide from risk. You can only hide from life. Fear never stops death. It stops life. Reclaim your precious life by letting go of irrational fear. Rational revolution. I'm all for it. 
So that's uh, our Canadian colleagues uh, reminding us that uh, the fear that is being induced upon us by our government and by our uh, press may not be in our best interest. Uh, okay, 15-minute rapid test coming our way. Andrew, uh, that's interesting. I'm, I think I may be taking one of those rapid uh, COVID tests uh, coming coming up next week or two. I've, I've had a series of them already. Oh, for COVID, how, they, how they're going to do the test, whether it's a PCR or a rapid antigen test. It doesn't hurt. It does not hurt. It's kind of uncomfortable. I've had my nose reamed out several times now. <laughs> the last time we did it in New York, though, they didn't do much. They just tested the inside of your nose. They didn't pick it up that much. Right. Uh, Julie Julie says, I don't understand why we track cases the way we do. Uh, it's, it, I think it has more than anything to do. It's a convention. Let's put it that way. Uh, what confuses me is that the flu kills 700,000 people worldwide. That's with a vaccine. Yes, we have 1 million deaths with COVID in 10 months without a vaccine, and people are going crazy. Yeah, Dustin, that is an interesting point, isn't it? Now, to be fair, uh, in risk populations, this COVID is much worse than flu, and it's more contagious than flu, and therefore can get away from us if we're not very, very careful with it. Big uh, birds, have I been to Canada? Of course, of course I have. Uh, have I been accepted in the stage three trials? They have not accepted me yet. They they asked me to, they, the, from the clinicaltrials.gov, they sent me an email saying, why don't you put together an, a, a video about why it's important to make yourself available for a clinical trial? And I thought, yeah, okay. I just never, I haven't gotten around to it. Um, Patrick saying you can't dismiss fear and listen to Dr. Fauci. I think you can. I disagree. I think you can. Uh, I think you can listen to him be very conservative and very, um, he, he, look, when he says he's concerned about Florida bars opening, he doesn't mean you should be concerned. He means he's concerned as the infectious disease officer, given the responsibility to see to it that we get through this safely. Yeah, he's concerned, not you. You should not be concerned. Uh, do I agree with Dr. Rand Paul? Um, unfortunately, that conversation between Dr. Paul and um, and Dr. Fauci, I didn't think he got off in a bad direction. Uh, unfortunately, they were talking about something interesting, and they just they were talking about whether or not there is T cell immunity, cellular immunity left behind, say, from other viruses like other coronaviruses that cause cold. This is something that uh, a lot of the biotech guys are talking about. We're going to bring somebody in here tomorrow to have that conversation a little bit about what kinds of technology is Dr. Shabang, about Shabahang, Shabahang, uh, Shabahang. about what, Shabang. what we can do Shabang. to uh, sort of <laughs> operationalize ways of testing for this. So that should be interesting. He works for a company called Additix that I work for. Yes. Um, should be getting flu shots now. Weeks, week leaks, weeky leaks. Abs categorically get your flu shot, 100%. I've given it to all my family, everyone I come in contact with, I shoot them with a flu shot. Um, Dr. Fauci says we haven't turned the corner on this yet. Uh, Jonathan says, um, that's an interesting way of framing it. Uh, have we turned the corner? We have not, I don't know what turning the corner would really look like. We are certainly in a better place than we were during the summer. Uh, I don't know what he imagines turning the corner. Look, to me, turning the corner is when we have vaccines. That that will be really turning the corner. And that's going to be a few months away yet. Consensus in Canada is they're beginning their second wave. Yeah, anywhere that locked down got a second wave. It's very simple. The more you lock down, the more of a second wave you got. All right, Andrew, why can't we have the scientists on both sides of the spectrum sit down and discuss everything? It seems when one, like Dr. Atlas, goes against the grain, he is ripped ripped apart but is just following the science. Yes, I. there are, if you know, well, you sent me the round table that happened in Florida, which was, again, one version of the looking at the data. I mean, there's other ways to look at it, but it's, if, if you're absolutely correct, we should get both schools of thought together and see if we can reach a consensus. That's how science normally works. Now, because each school of, of thought has to have a political alignment, they're not allowed to talk. It's the weirdest damn thing in, in my professional life. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, England has also started a second wave, yep, for sure. And if they do what um, if they do what we do here, you know, we did here, which is shut the bars, distance, eat outside, be careful, wear your masks, 
magically it gets much better very fast. Now, there are some people that were, that are convinced that um, the virus is just running its course. And that's just the natural course of the life of the virus that when, once it gets into a surge and people are on top of each other, like in bars and like in demonstrations and things, it will run a course and that course is is something we don't have much control over. I don't necessarily believe that to be true. I, I, it seems to me that vaccines, excuse me, that masks are having an impact. And remember, it wasn't that long ago, uh, Dr. Redfield, is that his name from CDC, said that the mask may be more effective than the, than the vaccine. See the question? I'm a first responder, worked through the pandemic, noticed my sense of taste has decreased 50%, never experienced any other symptoms, any chance I got the Rona. Yes, I would definitely be tested. If you uh, if you turn up negative on an, on a PCR, I would definitely also get an antibody test. Generally speaking, law lo loss of taste. Excuse me. Generally speaking, loss of taste or smell or both is an extremely strong indicator of COVID infection. It's it's one of the most, uh, in my experience, has been one of the most predictive indicators of being infected. So yes. Um, yes, and uh, McDonald's farmer, thank you for asking, telling him to get tested. He should, and if he's negative on a COVID PCR, he should get an antibody test. You may be already at that stage of the illness. Should immunocompromised travel? Yeah, you know, it, it really, these are personal questions. You're not technically in a risk category per se, but should you get COVID, obviously things can go be more problematic. All right. Is uh, Tyrus coming around, Susan? Is he near? Do you know? Probably about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. And they are, do we know how they did with the... Uh, Fine. With the uh, so-called hurricane? Yeah. They live. So... Uh, <laughs> He's still coming back, so he must be okay. Alder Ali... He has Wi-Fi. ...is telling me that uh, Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer are planning to do drugs and pass out in the next YMH Live. Well, um, at least I know I'll have a job. <laughs> because I'm certain they're going to have me come there and monitor them, which I would not, you know. <laughs> Wait, but there it is. How much are you getting paid for that? I don't know. Mm. Yes, Andrew's making a good point that we only hear from the uh, representatives of the different scientific schools for a few minutes in a Senate hearing. And we need a long-form symposium, you know, a multi-day kind of, the way we do it in science, we present papers and we talk about these things and, and hash it out. Latest on survivors who are IgG positive and if they have immunity or not, Mark, I'm not sure what that question is. Um, are you going to show that thing that you gave me? All right, why don't we put that up there? So I'm going to show you an article really quick that uh, got my attention. Uh, I do a Fox 11 show every night where I've been complaining about the way my local health officials have been threatening us. So every night, every night, the L.A. County uh, medical health director has been gets on the TV in Los Angeles. Barbara Farrar. Barbara Farrar. And, th and the mayor follows her. They both threaten lockdown. They both talk about a horrible Labor Day surge and how awful it's going to be. And here we go. Look at that headline. Update, L.A. County records, only one death related to COVID, no Labor Day surge, lowest total since March. This is supposed, this person is getting nearly a million dollars a year to deal with our health. And this is the person inducing the panic, the helplessness, the powerlessness, the depression, the overdoses. You can't do this to the population on a daily basis and not expect severe mental health consequences. That's the reality. That headline there is the reality. And for three weeks, they've been telling, excoriating the population of Southern California with how horrible their behavior was for daring to go to the beach on Labor Day, which has had no, and you could see there was no impact. Memorial Day, which was a weekend where we all congregated in tens of thousands, within three days, there was an upturn. Within a week, there were hospitalizations and deaths. Clear what happens when there really is a uh, uh, transmission. It's also clear when there is not. How this person can continue to hold their, her job is beyond me. And then we'll get on TV every day and become maudlin about deaths. Today, we've had 19 souls leave the planet. Look, yeah. this is a horrible thing. There are going to be deaths. And, and it's awful for people whose loved ones are lost. That's what a pandemic is. 
It's awful. And this is going to be a marathon, everybody. Stay with it. Stay with it. It's horrible. Support the people that have lost someone. But don't induce helplessness in the population. It's how you create depression. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> you okay? Andrew, Andrew, where are all the case surges, the media promise from the huge Trump rallies? Well, Andrew, there actually were. The indoor Trump rallies did have surges. Uh, they did indeed. But even those, some of the weird headlines with that. So Herman Cain goes to an indoor Trump rally and gets COVID and dies of stage four colon cancer. Of stage four colon cancer. But it goes down as a COVID death. So here we go. This is what's so confusing. This is why it's so, be so easy for the government and the press to, to shift their health messaging. The reason, I, the reason I feel so strongly about this is the show Loveline I did for so many years was a health messaging show. I worked in the AIDS epidemic for 10 years. We thought a lot about how to, how to create messaging, and people studied it, and they found out how you do it. How you change health behaviors is you create a relatable source, a case from who someone like you, uh, follow the narrative, use humor, deliver the messages. That's it. It's not somebody in a white coat threatening you. That is not how you get, that's how you get people to push back and not right. wear masks when they should. All right. Somebody anyway. looks like they've got one foot in the grave too. Who's that? Barbara Farrar. Oh. <laughs> I, you know, look, let's not, let's not go ad hominem on this. Oh. I, I don't want to do that. She's not even a medical doctor. It just, I, I know it bothers it's like you. Dr. Phil. Uh, you know, making all this money and uh, bad uh, advice. Uh, let's not do that. Um, Sorry. Uh huh. Kane was like hospitalized and dated COVID and stage four colon cancer. So he was a he has he was definitely going to be gone within six months. COVID hastened the death of stage four colon cancer. That is correct. That is the medical fact. Check your records. Uh, so I'm sorry. I got a shout out from Twitch. Oh. I feel good now. This is P keeping it real. Is that that one? <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. Usually, yeah. They're trying to pretend it should be a sprint, not a marathon. Tom Segar, that's somewhat true. Are COVID scare tactics cutting tobacco and nicotine spending? That's interesting. I don't know. Probably increasing it because when people are depressed, they start increasing their tobacco and alcohol use. That's just the way that works. Um, what happened to Adam Carolla? As far as what? He's still doing his pods. Same, he's dead. same. No, he's not. I'm kidding. He's uh, doing a pod with you at three days a week right now, right? Yep. yep. Three I'll or five. Three typically. Okay. I will see him tomorrow. Find the links on drdrew.com. He has a lot of opinions. You should go over there and check out all the shows. Uh, we have a Twitch channel, Jason. We do. We do. We have. We're out we, on Twitch. We have like three people following us, but <laughs> it's new. It's a new platform for us. But do, okay, so Mark, do survivors have quantifiable immunity? Yes, they have immunity. Exactly how to quantify it is something being discussed. We're going to talk about it on tomorrow's show. See what e, e Dexter sent from from Twitch. It's a little, it's a little high. See with a with a doggy right here. I see it. What does that mean? Hi. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Leopold wants to move out of California. Do you know that uh, Christina P is trying to get us to move too? Oh no. She's working hard on it. What, she can buy us a house? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lewis. Uh, uh, Richard, no. I do, um, are you talking about cannabis or are you talking about LSD? Uh, I mean, technically, I guess any use. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, wouldn't you, I pay any attention to that. Ooh, another generally. Twitch. We got a piggy. I guess they have fun little... Faces on Twitch you can use from Asuka Shini. Yeah, Kim Walker, Florida showing no surge after schools open up. Children don't get this virus. They don't get it. They don't. If they get it, they don't get any serious illness from it. They just don't. Now, adults do, and how you protect the adults is a question and ought to be dealt with systematically. I have to have a picture that I show of the Derricos. Every time you say that. Is reaching, <laughs> <laughs> is reaching herd immunity a realistic COVID goal for certain states? Um, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I, I, think, I think we have to have immunity when the, in the context of uh, mitigation behaviors. So still spread yourself out, still wear masks, still limit contact until we get the vaccine. 
Till we get the vaccine. Uh, yeah, Twitchers are popular today. Good to see you guys here. See Dexter's back. Oh, this guy was a, a scary Halloween face. I said last week kids will die from it. A small event, but it will happen. Um, <laughs> Casual armadillo. Thank yes, you. at children with at risk, you know, essentially zero, but children with at risk, various kinds of risk, there will be some death. Somewhere there will be some death. That is true. Uh, T cell science, yeah, that's what we got to get into tomorrow. Um, but if, but practically, you know, if you get one death per hundred thousand or per million, that is practically you. You can't. It's it's riskier to drive your kids to school then than to get the virus. Do you understand? If it's one death per million, there will be a death, but it's riskier to drive your kids to school than to get COVID. And, and people have to really begin to think that way. It's just, unfortunately, that, that's the risk-reward analysis. That's what you've got to do in your head. Uh, Doug saying, yeah, clear up the death certificate issue. Uh, Doug, the death certificate issue is a national issue, that, uh, and state by state it's different. There's no clearing up. There's no clearing up of this problem. Uh, Andrew, both my sisters are teachers. Uh, several students' cases reported. I think two teachers at one of the schools got it from not being in school. Okay, well, there you go. Um, and uh, Andrew, again, 15 and above, it gets a little different, right? It gets a little different than in children versus adolescents. And when that, again, has to be addressed and then sy systematically addressed and uh, prepared for. Uh, what about faulty test contaminated with coronavirus? I'm not sure what you're after there. Uh, except that we do test uh, too sensitively in this country. We do 40 cycles on our PCR, which is going to pick up all kinds of viral particles on everything. Uh, Dr. Fauci was talking about that yesterday in Dr. Staley, Staley's uh, uh, um, Instagram interview. I got a note back from Dr. Fauci's office saying they can't do it. Oh, I got an actual, an actual I'm response. Sorry, an actual response. Well, I'm glad that you reached out. To them. Yeah. Any evidence that uh, non-pharmacological non -pharmacological interventions work? Um, yes, there has been over the years, and there still is. And it makes sense that non-pharmacological interventions work. I mean, they work when we work on a patient in the ICU, right? We use all kinds of barriers and uh, infection control techniques. Those are non-pharmacological interventions. So to say they just don't work is not accurate either. Mm. Joshua said you worked for the White House? Question no, one. I did not work for the White House. I gave a speech at the yes, White House. Yes, you did a mental health lecture. Yeah. And you met President Trump. Yeah. Who liked you. Uh, Trying to help people with mental health disorders. Uh, NMP, there's no such thing as stage 4 cancer that you survive with a, cold, with a solid tumor. There's no such thing. Stage 4 cancer, there's no such thing as a remission. It just does not exist. Um, it's, you can have, well, a, a solid tumor, you can, you can fight it back, but it's not, it's not considered really in remission. So unfortunately that's the way colon cancer is. Uh, if he lived 14 years, nah, let's see if I can, uh, curfews, grim milestone. Yep. Dan, everything's grim. Now they, they moved from grim milestone to, uh, uh, what did they, they had a new word for it. They're, 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 they're tiring of the word grim. I've never seen that word grim. Last time I heard it used so much, there was a movie out about the Grimm's brothers' fairy tales. So if you want to see Drew's uh, speech at the White House, you can go to drdrew.com, and um, we have the link there. It's the White House Mental Health Summit on December 19th, 2019. Um, Andrew, you're saying Dr. Zelenko is going to drop a bombshell interview. Um, Susan, maybe we got to get him back. No, Robin, who? Zelenko. Oh, really? Because he's got some something new coming on. Very apop apocalyptic. Very. That, that's okay, part I'll, of it. Okay, I'll reach out and see if he wants to come. Um, does COVID cross the blood-brain barrier? Yes. Again, neurons and uh, immune cells are very closely aligned. They develop in the same from the same same system. Good come of the summit. What summit is that, Flora May? The one I just talked about. The mental health. Oh, that one. Um, yeah, it 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 got a lot of people. It made a little co some coalitions that um, 
and it raised awareness. I, I thought it did a pretty good job. It just it didn't change anything in California because they categorically refuse to address what's really going on here. They just refuse. Uh, you cannot have a colon transplant. And by, you got to understand, when, when you have solid trans- tumors, when, well, when you have solid tumors, there may have actually been something like a colon transplant done, but when you have solid tumors, the cells go. They metastasize everywhere very early in the course. So by the time, particularly with the colon, if it gets through the wall of the colon, it goes everywhere. With pancreatic cancer, by the time we find it, it's gone everywhere. Lung cancer, vast majority of the time, by the time we can see it, it's gone everywhere. So these are not tumors that we, at this point in time, can can cure. Okay. That's an interesting question. Let's put it up there. Well, this, sorry. Is there any info on the respiratory disease in Indian population being women are, are covered? Co- what does that mean? Like Muslims. Like oh, uh, well, most of the, I would, it's an interesting, I, I don't know any data on that. However, the cover is, is a single uh, linen as rather than the double pain that we need to protect against the COVID. So I don't think that would really work very well. Maybe if they wear a mask underneath. <laughs> yeah. Um, do I think the, Ted asked, do I think the pandemic has been good for telemedicine and the regulation eased on it? Absolutely. That's one of the great outcomes of this, is that physicians now can do telemedicine can get reimbursed for telemedicine and can practice across state lines. She just set that up. That's going to create a lot of great innovation and reduce prices for healthcare tremendously. I really believe Maybe it. Maybe that should be your next your next job. Georgia health officials have decided to withhold information about coronavirus infections at each school, saying the public has no legal right to the information. Uh, Mommy Tarsh, that's interesting. Maybe that's a way of managing the panic that they're trying to fight back, so people will go on about their business. Um, everything I read about McCain said cancer was in 2006. That's probably when he was diagnosed NMP. If it's stage four, it's a fatal process. That's just the way it is in, in, with solid tumors. I mean, if it's stage four lymphoma or things like that, you can, you can treat that. That's sometimes even curable. Um, so, uh, does India use hydroxychloroquine? Yes, they do. Um, people recovering quickly, Julie. Maybe that's a genetic thing too, though, or maybe it's something about who gets the, the uh, COVID there. Where's my buddy uh, Tyrus? I don't know. He's he's late it. today. He's probably got you know fish tank problems. Or... Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm I just want to make sure he just texted him. Let me see if I can oh, find anything about banging Herman. over there. Well, Herman Cain's colon cancer. what this says because as usual the, the press reporting on this is is woefully bad again um it, it's very it's very much like the uh it's called the uh oh shoot the amnesia i, I want to say melman's amnesia but it's uh I'll take that up i need my peripheral brain <laughs> gelman amnesia Gelman amnesia is a is physicist. That what you have right now? No. <laughs> Gelman uh, is a physicist who noticed that whenever he read a story about physics, the press got it wrong, like completely wrong. But then he went on to read the rest of the paper and assumed that was all accurate. That is called Gelman amnesia. They get everything wrong. And I've been watching them get uh, medical stories wrong my entire career, really drastically wrong. Drastically wrong. Okay, There's, let's see what this says here. Boy, they're 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 fiercely ready to in the press to say he had COVID, not cancer. He had COVID, not cancer. So that immediately clues me into the fact that he probably had cancer. Uh, let's see what it says about his cancer. Okay, so in 2006, a stage four cancer, but he recovered. That's false. That's not. That just doesn't happen. Uh, he may have been effectively treated at that time. But that's not something you recover from. Uh, so that story is wrong. Uh, let's see. So they clearly are reaching to try to try to make the COVID the cause of death. I'm like, not that you can rely on Wikipedia any more than anything else. Let's see if I can at least get his colon cancer history here. Stage four colon cancer, 30% chance of survival. Uh, 
in remission, but then they don't talk about how it came back and where it came back. So they don't talk about the course of his illness. Uh, so it's easy then to just go, oh, he had COVID, he died. So Here's a uh, question. Okay. Uh, can there be a significant negative consequence from taking a daily dose of zinc on the mid to long term? Yeah, you can screw up your copper metabolism. So again, 50 is probably excessive. You might want to drop that down to 25. And when this whole COVID thing is over, maybe it's something you only want to take in the flu season. There you uh, have it. Yep, I would say. Opinion on apricot seed for cancer. That's called laetrile. That is something that's been great. That has been debated for a thousand years. Please don't use laetrile. That has been, that has been um, debunked. Uh, mental health implication, real life population. Yeah. Uh, again, Esther, I will say it again. Stage four solid tumors, pancreas, breast, excuse me, pancreas, colon, lung at stage four is not curable. I did not say breast cancer. I did not say breast cancer. Here's a Twitch question. Since COVID stats contribute to the panic, is there a better way for the government to give out the info and not cause a panic? Yeah, there probably would be. It would be to keep it from the press and just have the CDC be the sole keeper of the information, put one person out there, Fauci or Burks, to give the information, and that's it. No more conversation about it. No more, no more spin. No more anything. Just the facts. Just that. If you look at how they did it in 2009, they would give up every couple of days and give a report on the pandemic. That's what they did. Uh, the press barely reported on it, and that probably was irresponsible because they weren't reporting enough on it then. Do I recommend te uh, telemedicine for checkup by a dermatologist? Is it, is it even possible? Ted, that's hard to do. Um, it depends on what the skin thing is and whether you have sort of, you need almost microscopic kind of uh, photography for that. You prefer Burks over Fauci, Dr. D-Man says. That's fine. Dr. Drew, thank you so much for doing this daily show, teaching us all so much. Be world. Trying, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what happened to Tyrus. <laughs> he must have lost. He probably his phone's dead, or he lost Wi-Fi. Well, I, I was going to make a big uh, point for him today. Uh, I know. Uh, I, I was going to say. I was going to say this is uh, dose of Dr. Sure. Drew with Tyrus. He's very concerned that uh, Greg Gutfeld make his show with Tyrus. I thought, oh, I can do that. I was ready to do that today. What's that? What, say it again. I was going to make today's show Dose with Tyrus. Remember how he gets very bent about Greg Gutfeld not making his show with Tyrus? This is the show we we're talking about. He's also on the Tyrus and Temp show, the Fox News podcast, and he has his own show, Enough Said, which we've never promoted. I feel like a jerk. But anyways, that's Tyrus. He's Maybe coming, not sure why he's not here. Yeah, Ms. Kaylee uh, shows a study, a study at UCLA regarding telehealth for mental health shows benefits. Yeah, Ms. Kaylee, the mental health part of uh, telehealth is, uh, is more difficult. There's no doubt that we could do assessments with telehealth. We can do some cognitive behavioral therapy with telehealth. But uh, how do we do psychiatry and how do we do other more complex forms of therapy? It gets a little more involved and you kind of need to be in the same room for that to work. But a lot can still be done. And uh, the telemedicine is pushing forward is a really good thing. An elevated uh, A1C of 6.6. .6. Um, no, Leopold, that's a marker for diabetes, not, not cancer so much. I mean, if you had your pancreas replaced, so it replaced the beta cells as well as the uh, ACE ACE cells, uh, yeah, it could be associated with... with uh, advancing pancreatic cancer, but a 6.6 .6 means borderline diabetes. So you have to pay attention to that. Pay attention. Any correlation with positive COVID diagnosis and lack of desire for alcohol? I can imagine uh, CBDMM, that would be associated with loss of taste. So that makes some sense to me that that might be the case. Do I think the response to COVID differed so much to that of the swine? Why do I think? Hmm. This is really interesting. This is the core question of the day. Uh, Rory S. asked this. Why do you think the worldwide response to COVID-19 was so much different to that from the swine flu? That is the million-dollar question, Rory. Um, because the disease, it's different, to be fair. 
It's more contagious and it's more brutal in risk population. But it hasn't killed that many more people. It hasn't been that much more widespread. It killed very elderly as opposed to 20 to 40 year olds the way the uh, H1N1 swine flu did. And yet we've shut down world economies over this one. And that one, you don't even know happened. People were so sort of um, casual with it. And it's one thing if that one had had a huge response and this one just had a huger response. But that one, there was no massive interventions. And this was complete and total massive interventions. It's really hard to understand. It's really difficult to understand. And by the way, the way we did it was with models that have never been tried before and never been proven to be effective. Um, Andrew Ashkazvili has a political uh, explanation for that. Uh, best medication for severe cannabis withdrawal, uh, deaf to commies. Um, Zyprexa works really well with the paranoia, irritability, and some of the agitation associated with the... If you stop, or you smoke a lot of pot and you stop suddenly, it's a pretty uncomfortable withdrawal for about a week. Uh, Ron Paul's legacy and recent stroke. It was a pretty dramatic... Maybe you want to show it, Susan. You want to show the video of Ron Paul having a stroke on TV? Not really. It's pretty dramatic, and I can sort of walk you through it. Rand Paul, when did that happen? It happened the last week. Ron Paul, not Rand Paul. Oh. Ron Paul. <laughs> uh, where he became, he's, you see the facial asymmetry develop. He develops an aphasia. And oh. because he was able to be taken to the hospital immediately, they could dissolve the clot and, and resolve the stroke, which is, which is a big, important deal. Um, what's a good age to start colon cancer screening of no family history? 50 is when you start getting colonoscopies. 50, everybody. There's no reason anyone should have colon cancer these, in, this, in today's world. Um, if you apply the COVID death certificate guideline to H1N1, deaths become close to COVID deaths. Doug, that's an interesting hypothesis. I don't know that that's true. Um, Lindsay, uh, the stroke is why you're worried so much about high blood pressure at 36. Well, you should be worried about high blood pressure at 36. And there are wonderful and extremely effective medications now that can make that a non-issue. You take your medicine, you get the blood pressure under control, you monitor it carefully, and you will not have strokes. You, you live in a good time for that. What do I think of Dr. Fauci saying, we should never shake hands ever again? Yeah, I can understand an infectious disease doctor would say that. God. I'm, I'm going to go back to shaking hands when the time comes. Uh... Have we found... <laughs> I don't know. What? I feel I'm, I'm bummed about Tyrus now. I've been thinking. Do statins actually reduce cholesterol? Yes, they do. I've been on statins since I was about 40 years of age. And uh, it's my, it, it, I took, take a half of the smallest dose of a, of a statin. And my cholesterol goes through the floor. My calcium score is zero. And I have a terrible family history of vascular disease. So I am... Uh, is the Cologuard test okay, Kimberly, instead of colonoscopy? It's okay. It doesn't really replace the colonoscopy. But if that's all you're due, please do get the Cologuard test every year. Um, Andrew Ashkazvili, what are you talking about there? What is what is coming out on the 30th? I, did, I missed your guys' commentary on that. Please do clue me in. Uh... Yeah, so we'll, I'll be watching very carefully what happens in Florida and in Indiana because they are opening up completely, and that is very interesting. I'm looking at Florida right now, and they're about 2,000 cases a day and heading down. Uh, same with hospitalization, about 2,100 a day and heading down. Death rate has plateaued about 150, and we'll see. We'll see what happens when a state opens up completely. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um Let's see, my, did I, uh, Zelenko video uh, you're talking about. On the 30th of October? Wait, are we already at the end of September yet? No, she's saying 30th of September. So we got to get him after that, Susan. What's uh, that? The Dr. Zelenko is going to drop his video on Wednesday. Okay. We need to grab him after that and see if we can talk to him. Uh, uh Okay, well, I have a, I have a fill-in for for. Uh, what, how, for Tyrus. Well, hold on a second. You gonna be the fill-in? No, I have a fill-in, but I don't see her. If, if you if you got oh 
Oh, Monica Ricci. Monica called in. <laughs> if you if you gave me the um, the Ron Paul tape, she's, I could um, I could go over that. I think she's muted. I don't know why. Casey wants to know how we stay grounded. Susan, how do you stay so grounded? How do I stay grounded? Uh, who said I'm grounded? <laughs> Casey did. You sound like you are. I don't know. I. Monica's. Oh, there she is. Hello. Hey. I hear her. I don't see her. So how come we can't see you, Monica? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm. I'm looking on my cam on my phone to see. You're the one that taught what... me how to do Zoom. I know. <laughs> Not on my phone though. It's hey, so guys, weird. I've got something I got to talk about here. So. Okay. Uh, Somebody okay. want to hear how South Dakota was doing. South Dakota and North Dakota are having significant upticks. Now, they're from very low levels to moderately low levels, but, but the slope is quite positive in what's going on there, both in, in all areas. I mean, this is what an outbreak looks like. Taste cases going up, hospitalizations going up, death rate kind of going up. But the death rate is going from two cases to five cases. The hospitalization rate is going from 50 to 200. That's a real thing. The case rate is going from 120 to 579. So if that were to spiral out, that would be bad times. Uh, let's and let's look at North Dakota. My own opinion is that South Dakota and North Dakota are going up like this because of the Sturges um, rally. There were tons of people interacting, on, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, North Dakota is going from 165 to 495. Hospitalizations 40 to 100. Death rate zero to two to eight. So again, these are not big numbers, but they are they are you know from the slope of the graph, uh, quite positive in the direction of outbreak. Now they could probably very easily get this under control because these are not large numbers of people, and they can do contract contact ta tracing then. Um, so I have Monica on a phone. Yeah, and Tom Cigar says yes. Stur just did it. Our uh, biggest fan. She's and I filling think in for Tyrus. It. Hey, Monica, thank you for filling in for Tyrus. How are you? Hey, I'm doing awesome. How are you guys? Excellent. How I are found things... a headshot of you I put up. How are things in Georgia? Uh, it's weird. Uh, it suddenly got warm <laughs> and humid, and everybody is outside and out and about, and it's beautiful. I mean, I love it. And our, uh, our, I'm going to say anecdotally, non-scientifically, of course, uh, that we have we have a lot of mask usage here good, good. everywhere I go in, 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 uh, interior environments, people are using masks mm -hmm. and I walk or run every day in the park near my house and outside, even some folks are using masks, but most people are not outdoors, uh, which I think is fine because I sort of take my cues from you. Like you take your cues from, well, you know, I, I wear them outdoors just cause, and, uh, but you're right. And UV in the outdoors with distance saying you should be fine. I'm looking at the graphs in Georgia. It really looks really good. Yeah. They're way yeah. down. It's great. Um, I, I'm hopeful that we'll move past this w through the holidays and, you know, maybe things will stay flat. I don't know because as it gets colder, people go indoors mm -hmm. and, you know, like you always say, indoors is where the transmissions are happening. Absolutely. So I guess. Absolutely. I guess it'll depend on how many people have already been exposed and had it and how many people have still not been exposed, perhaps. I, I don't know. I'm looking at, uh, by the way, Wisconsin. They started up September 7th, and they look pretty nasty, too. They've gone from 800 cases or 500 cases, rather, to almost 3,000, 2,800. Hospitalization from 300 to 600, so that's double. Death rate has remained flat or down a little bit. The case rate is up in Wisconsin, and Wisconsin had a lot of when were all the demonstrations, Wisconsin? When was that? Anybody remember the dates? If it was anything around September 7th, that pretty much tells you what happened. Wisconsin debates? No, the, the uh, demonstrations. With the Protests. Yeah. No idea. Uh, Andrew, I just came back to the thread here. What did I miss? Uh, he said he goes to a chiropractor that sees 5,000 clients a day. A day? That, that seems like a lot. Maybe 500. None of the workers That's wear masks, and most patients no mask. Lots of well, I know in elderly. Texas, in Texas they're not wearing masks. Uh, I just uh, I'm, I'm here that there's very little mask wearing in Texas. Um, I don't know what happened. To, I'm worried about Tyrus. I okay. hope he's not mad at us. Okay. I talked to him earlier, and he said he said. Um, he so said Monica, no. what's what's new with you? What's going on? 
Well, since we talked last, um, <clears throat> I am in the midst of studying for my official health coaching certification. Last time we nice. talked, I was unofficial. <laughs> cool. So that's good. Uh, and I'm, I am just reading and learning and reading and learning. And I think one of the things I've been down a little bit of a rabbit hole with lately when, uh, is cellular glycation from fructose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am blown away by how much worse fructose is for us than glucose. That, that theory comes and goes once in a while. I, I don't know quite what to make of it. it it's, um, I mean, you know, sucrose has fructose in it, doesn't it? Glu glucose. Sucrose. So, no, I'm talking about glucose. Okay. Like white sugar. I thought you said fructose. No, I did. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Who's on first? <laughs> no, I've said, I did. I said fructose is okay. um, apparently a, a big contributor to cellular gly glycation, which ages our bodies and our cells. And it also, interestingly, can make us look older. And so, you know, it's funny, some people don't really care about the cells on the inside, but when you tell them their face is going to look older, they're like, they suddenly get interested. <laughs> but but I, what I was saying, what I was saying when we got into our uh, who's on first routine was that sucrose has fructose in it. Sucrose is a glucose and a fructose molecule. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So fructose is coming in at us from all kinds of ways. Yes, exactly. But when we see fructose in ingredients, for example, an ingredient list or... Um, people say, oh, it's fruit sugar. It's fine. It's healthy. Right. It's still sugar. And it's still, and it particularly acts that way in your body, which again, I'm just going down that rabbit hole now recently. And I'm fascinated by it. I should have, I should have just been a scientist. Dang it. Um, <laughs> you can still train. It's all good. Yeah, I can. I can. But so that's one of, that's one of my, um, one of my topics lately that I've been looking at. I also have been looking at the stages of change which is interesting. This uh, health coaching material has a tremendously robust section on different models of behavior change. Right. And one of them is the trans theoretical model, which has the five stages, which many people have heard about, but then mm -hmm. there's so many other models and it's fascinating because what I, what I know just from my own business and, and my experience in other fields is that people change in different ways. They, they go from uh, negative to positive behaviors in different ways with different motivations. And that's really the most interesting part to me about doing like making a change in your health, for example, wearing masks or eating better or exercising or whatever it might be. And change is hard. That's the, that's the yeah. thing that it changes hard and sustaining change is harder. It, <laughs> it is. Um, but what I really believe in my heart of hearts is that when we see tangible results, from the behavior changes and the thought changes we make, that makes it so much easier to, to sustain that because we connect those dots directly. It's like a straight line, A to B, I do this and therefore I feel this, or I do this and therefore this happens. And so we connect those, those dots. I think that is really helpful in, in helping folks to sustain that positive new behavior pattern. That's what kind do you of think? a CBT element in, in change. Uh, Andrew in here, getting in here again, saying small study at TCU in Texas, uh, six weeks after reopening on campus, 20% of the population with virus now has disappeared. So that 20% number comes up again and again and again, whether it's on a college campus, a, a, a region, a cruise ship, there's something about 20%. Maybe it's how we change our behavior or how we, uh, how we uh, maybe it's we have some cellular immunity we still have to determine that yet whether there's some something about the 50 you know the 80 percent that don't get it maybe some of those or a large number of those have some relative immunity we're going to still have to answer that yeah so want to talk any more about that change and how, how people make change i would love to i think that's a great topic because i think people are interested in making their lives better i mean don't you that's that's why people call you because they want to know and that's how our brains are wired isn't it our brains want to know how do we keep ourselves safe? And how do I learn from someone else's mistake or my own mistake, right? So it's interesting. So the, um, you wanna talk about the, the stages of change, like where people are and how to recognize what stage you might be in if you're thinking about making a change? Go ahead, yeah, talk about it. Oh, okay. Well, I was hoping you would help me, but I will. <laughs> well, you wanna talk um, about the contemplative, pre-contemplative, those sorts yeah, of stages? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. well, there is, there is essentially thinking about making a change planning to make a change, making the change, sustaining the change. And each of these stages have different qualities, and there are people that can sort of help you, hopefully, motivate you to move from one, one stage to the next. 
Yeah, so the pre-contemplation is where pretty much everybody is in their life at some point about some thing, some topic, right? <clears throat> so anything. And that's where you're not even thinking about making a change. Like it's not even on your radar or you're actively against it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could be your doctor, for example, might say to you, you know what, Yeesh, your blood pressure is high and you're this is that and blah, blah, blah. And we, I need you to eat in a different way. And you just may be like, you know what, dude, mm, I'm not doing that. So, so you're in pre-contemplations, which means I'm not even thinking about that. But then if something happens, so you get a, you get a, like a scare, for example, that might move you from that stage of change rapidly through the next couple, or it could just move you to the next one, which is contemplation, which is, you know, maybe that guy was onto something. Maybe he does know something after all. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll think about starting to, and down South, we call it fixing to, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're fixing to do something different. We just aren't sure what it is or how to do it yet. And then the third stage is the preparation. That's when you're really thinking like, okay, I have decided to change. I've got to so do something you're different. setting a date or you're deciding you're how you're, you're, you're getting yeah. the exercise equipment, that kind of thing. Yeah. You've made the decision. See, the, the two for the first two are you haven't even made the decision yet. It's just kind of mulling around in your mind, maybe. The third one is, okay, I have made that decision. I am doing X. And now you're ready to gather your information because you're you're like ready to go. And that's where you start. Like you said, you're going to look at gyms or you're going to you know, meal planning services or whatever. And then your fourth stage is really where you start actively integrating these behavior changes into your life. So that's, that's the action stage. And the interesting thing about action, the action stage is that this is where we're, we're still really vulnerable to relapse and to, and to sliding back Sure. because the action stage takes several months to take hold. It, it's not just like overnight. Now, you know, people are different, as you always say, people are different. So there are people who, well, let me just tell you, for myself, when I went into the action stage, I was in, I was all in from, from day 13. That was it. But a lot of times it'll take six months or more for people to get really into new habits and start seeing results and all these things. So that's when they really need support from people around them. And they have to be very mindful too of the people around them who may not be supportive and, you know, I imagine, Dr. Drew, that in your work with addicts, that that is massive, like the massive factor in who's going to support you and who is not going to support you right. and be aware of that. Like, don't be around those people who aren't going to support you. Right. I mean, that's the basis of 12 step, right? The fellowship. Yeah. That's the basic yeah. thing. And, and people do need uh, satellite central nervous systems to maintain a change. They just do. Will you explain satellite central nervous systems? Other people's brains. Other people's ah. bra other brains help change our brain. Uh, our it. brains don't yeah. change very well on their own, but uh, other brains can change them. Well, you know, that's the power of a team, too. And, you know, it's, it's funny. I put something on Twitter not that long ago about there, there is no one magic thing. You know, I, we always joke about you see these things online that says this one weird trick to, you know, get rid of your belly fat or one weird trick to do this. There is no one weird trick and there's no one magic food you can add to your diet that's going to burn fat or whatever, whatever. So it's not what you add in terms of food. It's what you take away. And I think the same thing is true with our social environments. We may be, we may be plugged into a great team, which is awesome. But if we're also sabotaged by other people in our mm. lives, we really need to be aware of both the additive and the subtractive benefits of, of that equation. Um, I can't tell you how many people I, I, I interact with on social media behind the scenes privately, of course, who say, gosh, I really want to, you know, I've been doing great, but my wife does this or my husband does, does this or says this or, you know, yeah. undermines exactly. And so it's just important to kind of, to kind of plug in with people who are supportive so you can build your own backbone. And like you said, I love that satellite, satellite nervous system. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the fifth stage is the maintenance stage. And that's where, you know, you're in a habit, you're feeling confident, you're feeling strong. Yeah, but maintenance you, is where most people lose it. A lot yeah. of people can lose yeah. it because they get complacent and they get overconfident. And, and they're not doing maintenance. They're just assume the behavior will just continue on its own. And there often you know, is a time when that is the case, but that's usually years down the line, not day, weeks or months. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this just the other day. There's a big, there's a big gap between someone asked me about this on Twitter. In fact, 
there's a big gap between, let's just say, theoretical zero and 50 when you're when you just begin a program of, uh, let's say, a health and fitness program. You start at zero, and then your progress from zero to 50 is dramatic. It's like, oh my God, I went from you know this to that. Well, then your progress from 50 to 60 is incremental. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, and that's where sometimes I think people get discouraged. Like you just talked about in maintenance, you, you're not seeing those big dramatic changes anymore, but you still have to do the work that got you from zero to 50 right. in order to maintain or to build from 50 to 60 or from 60 to 70. And I found that that is true, but I've also found that for myself, the, I can maintain the, the musculature that I've created it took me a long time to get it, but now that I have it, it's not that hard to maintain. And I think that's because of just body physiology. I mean, what is well, your thought on that? And and it, it becomes at a certain point, it becomes self-sustaining because there's a certain amount of rewards you get that, that keep kind of coming in. And mm-hmm. that's different than the rewards of the massive progress early in the, early in the change process. Um, Susan, there is somebody on Twitch with the moniker first lady of love. That's me. Okay. What are you doing on Twitch? I went over. I just thought I'd say hi. <laughs> okay. There's like four people over there. I meant to go on as you, but I was signed into my Twitch account. So Got it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> never seen that over on Twitch. That's interesting. Okay, so Tyrus said that he... he Got the email, his phone died, and he lost track of time. <laughs> but he's got to be on the show because he's in all the headings and everything. And we'll, we'll keep you on, Monica. So he's going to come on? Yeah. Are we going to be on together? Won't that be fun? Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Well, let's hope he's, he, he said he... I don't know. We all have those days. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> he's been on so many shows, and we don't pay him shit, so... Probably nice of him to. Wow, you're getting a lot of love over on Twitch. I know. I'm trying to give love to my Twitchers. Twitchies. Oh my, my Twitchettes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. They, they're, you know, it's a new bunch of people. I mean, I, we probably have like four followers there, so they're all on right now. <laughs> I'm trying to see. I was trying to see how many people were on there. Oh, come on, Tyrus. Jeez. <laughs> oh, is he taking his time now? Uh, I want to show him that thing about the woman who got tased for not wearing her mask. Mm-hmm. All right, and yeah, I'm still I'm watching the. When the, he comes in, I'll let you know. Just all right, keep I'm watching you guys in the. Just in the, keep talking. Let's, let's go back to Twitch. <laughs> I'm watching you guys in the thread too, so I've got an eye on you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it, again motivating change is not something that's easy to do. And this is the part that is so lost in the current world where people are, they're compassionate to the point that they are killing people rather than helping motivate change so people can live a flourishing life. It really is bad. Um, I'll just point at homelessness, for instance. You, you can, there's ways to motivate people out of that, not by, not the way we're doing it at all. We're doing the opposite. And there are people that are very good at motivating people to make change. Uh, and tr- Anthony, you're, you're in there. Anthony Brown just said that's your cup of tea. I mean, Anthony would be extremely effective at helping people move in the right direction. But we're not allowed. Literally, the laws prevent that now. And that is murder. That's not compassion. That's murder. And Insanity. you're allowing people to die of drug and alcohol addiction and other mental illness in our streets at the rate of four a day in L.A. County alone. Well done with your laws. Well done. Mm, too much. And, Look, it and, just popped in. Oh, hey, Tyrus. What's happening, man? How are we doing? I'm good. Susan wanted to share a video for you, with you. Uh, first of all, I want well, to say this. I is sent the, him the link. Wait a minute. This, first, I want to tell you. Monica's that, here, too. Monica Ricky Monica. is with us. Uh, that Tyrus, this is the dose of Dr. Drew with Tyrus. Yes. With Tyrus. It is. You with go with Tyrus. That? He even has a banner with his name on it. I, th- I thought the show. W word would get a little more out of you than that. Oh, we didn't have the <laughs> Did you hear what I said? He's wait. He's not ready yet. Yes, I have a banner. Oh, no, oh there we no, go. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I need to pay him. <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know. All right. All right. You're That's back. what I'm waiting for. So what I wanted to tell you is this is the dose of Dr. Drew with, with Ty- Tyrus. With Tyrus. 
Oh. Right? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I knew that word had a, had a little meaning for you. And We're going to well, put with Tyrus on here. And on I the thought, next banner. well, damn, yeah. I can, I you can have do to, that. You have to forgive me. I had one of the most um, intensive leg workouts I've had in a while. And uh, I am feeling the effects of a ridiculous squat day. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm watching you doing deadlifts and squat regularly on Instagram. So I, I don't imagine... I can imagine an extraordinary day for you is like two hours. Yeah, it was a rough day. Like, uh, I literally lost my mind for about, I came home. Actually, you know, it's, it's crazy because um, I've put so many things in front of myself now. So, like, working out and stuff is like my time. And then when I get back, I feel like I go through like this period of like trying to catch up. Yeah. And um, I saw, you know, this weekend, I saw a life-changing documentary, and I was trying to show it uh, to my daughter, who's six, and trying to get her to appreciate it like I did. And I don't know if anyone out there who's a parent sees something really cool and you want to share it with your kids, and most of the time they're like, "Yo, no, not it doesn't. It doesn't work out." Yeah, she actually said, hey, dad, am I going to see that documentary? And it's called My Octopus Teacher. And I think for workaholics and people who get burnt out, especially during this pandemic, he, this guy is a, an accomplished cinematographer and he spends his time traveling the world and filming all over. And he was uh, in uh, Africa. He's from South Africa. And he was... Uh, I think it was in Kenya for, I think it was 20 months or something filming uh, a, a life and day of Bushmen and their hunting and stuff. And he just burnt out. He just, his family life was terrible. Everything was bad. And he went back to something he did as a kid, uh, which is he used to go swimming in, in the uh, ocean. And the craziest thing happens. He ends up becoming best friends with an octopus. And here's a guy who doesn't, think of animals as anything other than objects. He's not a, a liberal, you know, animals rights and all that kind of a guy. And it's incredible. Like the intelligence that you're seeing, like at first you're like, oh, you know, my octopus teacher, this sounds silly. But when you're, there's moments where you're like, it, it equates to your life where like, if we ever just slow down and just get back to what the core of us makes us happy, it's a lot easier to handle life's issues when you get hit if you have that one place you can go back to that one happy memory that you can make fun you know like there's just one thing you can do like if there's one thing you've always enjoyed dr drew what would that be something that through the test of time something that you always enjoy to do but you don't get much time to do it what is the arc of the story how does he how does he leave the friendship i just watched a little bit of the trailer well, the thing about it is he knows that their friend their time is short I guess the best way I could equate it to anything was like a real life Charlotte's Web. An octopus lifespan is only a year, maybe a little more than that. And everything in the ocean tries to eat it. <laughs> and it's basically a liquid animal. They have no shell, uh, but they're the most intelligent. For a mollusk, they're like, intellect is out of the world. They problem solve, they communicate. And he's literally communicating with an octopus and he's basically goes through this animal's life but it's really helping him get his shit together like with he's a bad father he's he works but he's not there for anybody and slowing down and seeing the other like appreciating the little things you get caught up in it now i don't recommend that everybody runs off to south africa and jump in the ocean and go looking for an octopus but i would recommend to watch it to just kind of Sometimes you got to slow down and find your baseline. And then you can go take that and go back into the fire, but have your baseline. Like and have your, your, daughter, your daughter didn't go for that so much? Oh, she loved it. The only thing is, like, I have to answer. Luckily, my animal game is strong because <laughs> everything. Uh -huh. Oh, the fish. And every, what's that? What's this? What's that? What's this? Uh -huh. And I love that. She's like my baseline you know, that I'm sharing something with her. And that was one of the things in the documentary, whereas this guy was always that every animal or documentary in the bush in the crazy environment 
this guy was filming it and that's all he did you know he was always on the job he wasn't he wasn't present at home and a lot of us can relate to that and then it shows him sharing the moments with his son and now his son is diving with him and his son is swimming and his son's asking questions and you're seeing as as a parent like here is a guy who was had no connection. A lot of times when we lose connection with our kids, we always blame the kids or the time, or we never look at ourselves. We'd be like, what could we, what could draw us together? And I, it just, for me, I was like, wow, this is a, I learned, I never met the octopus, but uh, I would have shook one of its, its tentacles if I could have, because Aww. she taught a lot of people. I just was really impressed with how much we overthink things when it's not as bad as we think it is. And if we just kind of caught our breath and slow down, we might actually enjoy some of it. Did it make you feel better about all the political nonsense in this country? I forgot about it. Yeah. I, I forgot. I've been literally talking to anybody who will listen to me. You got to watch this documentary, you know, um, and if you're not an animal enthusiast, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Ingrid liked it and she's not. <laughs> Especially not fish. Um, <laughs> you would appreciate it, Dr. Drew, I think, just because you're a workaholic, and I'm sure there's moments when you think... That's true, he is a workaholic. ...was really going to work worth it that day when you miss some of the things. You can't get those things back, but finding that baseline and getting to where... I know, me personally, I took work home a lot. I never, I never clocked out. And anything that was a disruption was a disruption to my job. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah. use that as an excuse to not connect anyone. Like I'm working, I'm busy. I don't have time, you know? And so it, it became an escape. I like how he did that. And I try to look at the way things are when we're dealing with the political climate and we're dealing with things. We get so caught up in the, in the fire of the headline or the accusation that we don't ever just kind of catch our breath and slow down and go, is this really that? You know, and the octopus the, and the human bond? Yeah, they do, actually. Um, there is a moment, I, I don't want to give, but there is a moment when uh, I would equate it to something like, if you've ever seen E.T., mm. there, there is a moment where you're like, holy, did this just really happen? Is this a being? <laughs> because you, you think of things like with a dog, you know, you, a dog comes to you and puts his head in your lap and things like that, but they're domesticated and they're bred and then, you know, whatever. But when you're, when you're, we're all observers when we're in the natural world. We're not really part of the natural world anymore. Everything fears us. Mm -hmm. and with good reason. With good reason. Human beings have been kicking ass since we figured out we could put a rock and stick together and we've taken no prisoners. So anything on four legs or with wings goes the opposite direction when we're around. And rightfully so. We are the dominant predator on this planet by far. And he was able to become part of the environment to where the octopus was like, this guy's not a threat, so I'm going to check him out. And you can see the animal studying him as much as he's studying her. And it's really just, it makes you realize that everything, you know, when you see a snail or when you see things and it's insignificant, it's not really insignificant if you just kind of slow down for a minute and watch it. I used to do it as a, a lot I, when I was a teacher. One of the things I did, because I didn't have a lot of money for field trips, we'd go bug hunting and I would tell them, just find a spot in the field and don't move and just wait. And then within two or three minutes, oh, I see an ant, oh, I see a ladybug, oh, there's a spider. If you just slow down and wait, everything kind of slows down and you can start to observe things and see really cool things right in front of you. It doesn't cost anything. Interesting. So I don't know if that's where we're going to go today, but that's where my head is at. Let me ask you one thing about the uh, debates tomorrow night. Any predictions? Yeah, uh, I predict that we will be more divided than ever. Mm. Uh, both sides are going to say they won. Both sides are going to pick apart any mistakes made. Um, what I'm looking for is the fact-checking explosion that's going to happen after the debate right. where which network have the most experts to count all the 
whether things were facts and whatnot, um, if it lives up to the hype, you know, um, the Republican side of the campaign has really put a concerted effort to put in that because he has to be to be a president. Like that's what that's what they're going with. Uh, that's that's what they're going with. And is a crook and a dict a fledgling dictator in the making. So both of those narratives are wrong. So it, that's the bar that was set. Uh, so I can't, I mean, I'm going, I have to watch it, uh, <laughs> not just career. My yeah, Celtics are out of the playoffs. So, yeah. it, you know, it's a Tuesday night, so I got nothing going on. So I'm going to, going to watch it, but I, I can't see either guy putting out their best foot forward and their best plan forward to the American people. And that's too bad because that's really what debates used to be about is you give your plan. He gives your plan. You make, you argue your points and uh, you're still Americans and you part as friends. It didn't, it, but this, this feels like a super fight. This feels like it's two countries about to go to war, you know, yeah. with their leaders and see who's going to get more points who's got the best diss Weird. of the night you know and instead of who's who's going to do the best job uh for this country monica and, I, I know you've been uh quietly you know, we're, sitting we're, there we're i'm, I'm going to let you go monica while tyrus and i talk thank you for that little primer on moments of our mechanisms of change uh and we will no doubt talk to you soon monica awesome great to be, great to be okay. here you bet yeah, Tyrus, while okay. we were tr trying to track you down, Monica Riki kindly came in and we did a whole conversation about how people change. And, um, yeah, it's it, – do you feel uh, – I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm wanting to run away from all of it myself. You but you can't. I think, honestly, before I saw this documentary, I would have been with you. But uh, it was that profound to me to where that I have a good life and I have a lot of things to be positive about. How much the president of the United States affects me on a daily basis is very remote. If we were really looking at what we should be worried about would be the Senate and the House. And I always come back to that. Those are the ones that affect. You know, to that, to that end, you know, you have been red hot on the um, qualified immunity and all that stuff. And I'm noticing that most everything people are complaining about these days are shitty laws. We've got a lot. Yep. The reason Breonna, uh, Breonna Taylor was the execution of justice within the structure of the laws as they exist. Shitty laws. We have a lot of yep. need for some law change in this country, don't you think? Legislative change? Yes. And I also think that um, the problem is that for some reason, as great as our Constitution is we kind of made a loophole to qualified immunity. You're asking the criminals to out themselves. Right. You're asking, when I say that, I'm yeah. saying you're asking the senators to say, yeah, I'm going to hold myself accountable. Not right. only am I going to have term limits on myself, my decisions I can be held accountable for. Not going to happen. Right. You know, and... I don't think there's an executive I'm, and I don't know. And if there's a lawyer out there that can help me with that, I, that'd be great. I don't think any, there is an executive order for term limits. Right. No, no. So you would be having that. Yeah. House members in Senate. Our, our constitutional, you know, or you would have to amendment. In court. So, well, listen, um, I, I don't know. We, we need to think about, and the, most of the laws need to be changed or actually <laughs> state by state. Too. There really aren't federal laws even. They're sort of state by state. But it, can you still hear me? You still with me? You're yeah, I hear you clearly. You're yep. freezing up a little bit. <laughs> um, how did you guys make it through the uh, so-called hurricane last week and the week before? <laughs> uh, I think we had some wind again. <laughs> <laughs> like some sprink some sprinkle with some wind. Well, my friend, I, I'm going to have to let you it go. Was a little, it was a little, it was 
short conversation today because I've got to run, go do Fox 11, this uh, local Fox thing I do. And we're having Dr. Oz on tonight, so it's always fun for me to talk to him. So you're officially the... There it is! Oh, I love it. With Tyrus. Take a picture and send that to you. Send that to Greg. (laughs) I'm sending that to Greg. It will be on the poster. Actually, I'll be doing it as the lead-in for the show. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to get a poster print cut out and be like, I don't need your whip anymore, Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. With with Tyrus after a nap. (laughs) <laughs> Which is who who Tyrus's friends really are. We were we I was w- a little worried that we made you mad, so I'm glad you showed up at the end. Uh. And by the way, it's good. Sh- it was a very good show last week. I, I will be. Yeah, I love the Greg Gutfeld show. It keeps us happy on a Saturday. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was really funny. It was very good. Um, all right, my friend. Well, have a great Thank week, you. and uh, we'll talk with you next week. And uh, maybe uh-huh. there'll be another hurricane, so called. Yep. I mean, sprinkles and some wind. But I love you. Like on Monday ever, ever again. All right, Jeez, buddy. I'm dying. All right, we'll talk soon. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. So you do have a question, Drew. Uh, okay, go ahead. I uh, was wondering what your thoughts on the first. Yeah, good. Yeah, you picked up a good one there. Oh, thank you. Um, it was one, another Twitcher. Yeah, I, Twitch has been going nuts, I know, by I'm, the way. I'm, I'm You're getting them going there. On the new All Twitchers. those pictures they put up, I don't quite understand what they mean, but God bless well, them. Well, everybody's putting it up on all the other ones, too. So. All right. Hi, Dr. Drew. I was wondering your thoughts on the forcing of medication to people that are in a state of mental disability. Would it need to be done to help the homeless? No. What What I'm talking about is not forcing anything what i'm talking about is what monica was referencing which is you motivate people to change there's ways to with a carrot and a stick you get people to do what they need to do and as they improve it becomes much easier to to keep them in going down that course i know how to treat this is what kills me about seeing the homeless i know how to treat people like that i did it for decades it's not that hard but you can't not do anything you can't say Live on the streets, do drugs, traffic drugs, steal to support your habit. That kills people. What you say is, hey, you can't do this, and come with me. I've got something for you. That's it. Very simple. Change the laws so you can't do all those things that result in murder, and you open up facilities and residential environments and vocational rehab and highly motivated f- environments that make it make it appealing to go, and you go, uh, and... For those that are truly incapable of doing that, you have conservatorships. That will take care of the whole problem. But no, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. Not here. Not in California. (laughs) We kill people here. It's much better. I just want to tell you that I have never seen so many emojis ever. Look at I know. Look at that. I know. It's kind of, I don't know where they got them all or what it is about uh, Twitch. Like can mom shit on the show. Is there something about <laughs> Twitch that they, they make a, they Those must are make cute. a. Look at the kitty. And the, but that must be a cultural thing at Twitch that they have a thing they about have that. cute emojis. Well, okay. well, you guys impressed Susan Pinsky today. I know. <laughs> all right, you guys, uh, we're going to have to wrap this thing up. It's been kind of a little fragmented. I appreciate your patience. There's another um, one, Fate 128. We are gonna. What is I wonder, that? I have to look and see. It looks like a coronavirus. It's like I know a smiling it's coronavirus. It's funny. Uh, we will be talking a little T cell physiology tomorrow. Maybe some la- some mechanisms whereby we can start to measure T cell and cellular immunity. Oh wow, wait, look at that and we're going to talk about herd immunity. Oh, that's well. Susan is <laughs> Susan cannot get this TV show out of her head. That is a couple that has fourteen kids, uh, multiple, many of the multiples, yes, and they all natural. got and they all got coronavirus. Twins. And if, yeah, as you and see, twins. what happens is there's a grandma and there's another friend. All four adults got coronavirus. Well, this is the mother. This is the father. The dad and the mo- grandmother got really sick grandma and then got sick. well. And the baby. The, gra- the mother and the friend and, and the uncle, I think, uh, both tested positive but had no symptoms. Five of the kids had a one night of fever, tested positive, but that was it. They all got that it. Was it. That was a household of coronavirus. That's how that – that's how – it's called doubling down with the Derricas. It's not as devastating as people think it is. It has the potential to be. And if any of them were obese or had real risk factors like hypertension, (laughs) hypercholesterolemia, all that stuff, it'd be a different matter. And they were 85. Different matter. Okay, look at those puppies. My goodness. Another Twitch. uh, I know. Master J. Yeah, so we have some fun Twitch people now. Yeah, we appreciate the entertainment value you guys are giving us. I know, those are funny. That one looks like an amoeba. All right, I got to wrap it up. I got to go do Fox 11, not Fox News, Fox 11. Think uh, Family Guy, Simpsons, that kind of Fox. You know, um, with Alex Alex 
Michelson. Which I think you're going to show up. There you go. Alex and I. Oh, it's not tonight. Alex is. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, I will That's be. That's right. He's on a little break. Yep. And I will be with him tomorrow. I don't know even about tomorrow, though, because of the debate. So we'll see about that. We'll see how that works. But definitely Wednesday, he and I will be, to be together. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to head for the exit, and we will be in here tomorrow. We'll talk a little cellular immunity and uh, ways to test for that. And uh, Wednesday, very special Wednesday, we've got Megan, oh, yeah. Megan Kelly coming in. It'll be at 2 o'clock, not 3 o'clock. Don't forget this. This should be a yeah. good one. So uh, very, I'm very anxious to talk to her and see what uh, she's thinking these days and what her plans are for the future. So, And uh, Adam just interviewed with her this morning. Do you, oh, really? Mm -hmm. You got to do her first? Mm -hmm. I mean, one of her first uh, podcast yeah. guests. Great. All right, everybody. We will see <laughs> you tomorrow. Real talk. Headlines have become... It's sickening. They become poisonous. Dissecting headlines. Defying state orders. Sheriff Bianco not enforcing what the governor is saying. Dialed in with decision makers. Clarify what you actually meant. Get the answers you need. The beginning of this, we were told, don't wear a mask. Is this really helping? Expect a different kind of newscast. Fox 11 News Special Report. Weeknights at 7. With so much focus on keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe and healthy, it's easy to forget that most of us are going to experience things like allergies, colds, possibly even the flu. So reminding you, proper hydration is crucial for all of these things. Remember, even slight dehydration can make you feel like you're getting sick, and none of us need that anxiety right now, that's for sure. That's where Hydrolyte comes in. Longtime fans will remember my obsession with Hydrolyte, which is simply the best oral rehydration product I've tried. I'm even more excited to introduce their brand new single serve powder sticks. Simply pour one powder stick into a glass of water. They recommend seven ounces. The powder dissolves almost instantly, creating the perfect balance of sodium, glucose, and water. Delivers up to four times the electrolytes of your typical sports drink. The other great news about Hydrolyte's new powder sticks, they're 100% all natural, no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They're available in flavors like orange and lemonade, and they taste great. Hydration is crucial, and Hydrolyte is fastest and easiest way to stay ahead of it. Get your supply of Hydrolyte powder sticks now at hydrolyte.com slash drdrew. Again, that's H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash drdrew, and then use that code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout.